اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم افوض امري الى الله والله بصير بالعباد الحمد وثنى لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاه والسلام تحت الاكرام على جميع الانبياء والمرسلين والشهداء والصالحين والصديقين وعلى خير خلقه البشير النذير السراج المنير الذي سمي في السماء باحمد وفي الارضين بابل قاسم محمد وعلى ال بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين المنتجبين الميامين الذين اذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا ولعن دائما لا اعدائهم اعداء الله من يوم ظلمهم الى يوم الدين اما بعد فقد قال مولانا زين العابدين روحي وارواح العالمين لمقدم الفدا ان ابي قد بذل مهجته ليستنقذ عباده من حيرة الذلالة صدق الله وصدق رسوله وصدق ولي الكريم صلوات May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in these blessed days and month of Safar al-Mudhaffar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us strength and tawfiq to perform our duties and responsibilities. I would like to extend my condolence for these days of mourning, Arba'een. Indeed, Arba'een is one of the turning point in the history of mankind. And especially in the history of Islam. Inshallah, tonight, tomorrow, <laughs> and day of tomorrow, I would like to shed some lights and present a different perspective about the duties and responsibilities we have towards Ashura, Karbala, and Arba'een. I would like to begin with asking this question to myself and all of you that in this entire globe from the beginning of the history of mankind perhaps till the resurrection day we know for a fact that the event of Karbala based on the teachings of Ahlul Bayt and also prophets beyond Ahlul Bayt, Noble Prophet Islam the event of Karbala is one of the outstanding event that covers and completes the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all the prophets, one after another, they reminded about the event of Karbala and perhaps the event of Karbala is one of the unique event which was communicated to people or the course of time and through prophets and holy prophet and after the event of Karbala till today we know that all the Ma'asumin or Imams they did and also perhaps the Muharram and Safar is a blood and oxygen of the Islam and of faith no doubt about that right that's one fact the question is who has knowledge, a pure knowledge, a complete knowledge about the event of Karbala, about the purpose of Qiyam and sacrifice of Imam Hussain. If you see from the beginning to till today, we'll find that one person which is a fourth Imam, he is the most knowledgeable person in terms of the event of Karbala, right? And he had a very extend, you know, very comprehensive time after the event of Karbala for 35 plus years and he lived up to the mission of the event of Karbala and Imam Hussain's mission, right? No doubt about that. 
Why? Because several reasons. The first reason is he was eyewitness. He was son of Imam Hussain. He was paraded by force in, uh, in prison and taken from Karbala to different places, to Damascus, and he got freed. He was given <coughs> all the <laughs> hidden knowledge from Allah and from Imam, Imam Hussain. And perhaps he was the one who listened to all the speeches of Imam Hussain from the beginning to the end, right? No doubt about that. The question is how Imam Sajjad lived up to the mission of Imam Hussain. What he did, what was his contribution, what is his legacy for me, to me, to you, all of us, to follow and to connect ourselves to the event of Karbala. Because Karbala has a different aspects. And each and every aspect is so intense, comprehensive, and deep, and painful often, and also often that can lead us towards a different state of emotions. That's why we cannot capture all the aspects of Karbala. But I don't want to spend my time about different aspects of Karbala because you were listening from a long time and during the month of Muharram Safar every time when we have a majalis, one of the pinnacle of the spirituality of the majalis is to have a aza and also masaib and we keep here that and no doubt about that but beyond that if i want to connect to imam sajjad i want to live allahumma salli ala muhammad if i want to live up to the mission imam sajjad he left a legacy what is his legacy that's a question Unfortunately, most of the time, when you hear some of the names, with the name, we have a misconception and wrong titles which carry with the name of that person. Like when we were, when we were called, talk and discuss about Imam al Sajjad, we say, Be Mare Karbala, right? Indeed, he was sick. Indeed, it was a will of Allah subhanahu ta'ala to preserve the imamats. As our fifth imam, when someone asked our fifth imam why he was sick on the day of Karbala, on the day of Ashura, our fifth imam, he said, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to preserve the imamat, the lineage of the imamat, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to present his guide to the world. And that's why he became sick. So then the companion, Abba Basir, he said, Oh Imam, we understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can protect him from different ways. Why he was sick? To the point that he was not able to stand on the day of Karbala. We know all the you know, hadith and riwayat and we masaib, right? Our fifth imam, he said, because beside he was imam, he was a son. And he had an emotional attached to that. If he was not sick, it would not be possible for imam to see that all his brothers, everyone, they became shaheed, and his father, his calling, and he would not go and help. And if he go for help, he will be killed, right? So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to preserve him, and he became sick. No doubt about that. But the sickness did not last it very long. It was only for that purpose, period. If that is the case, 
the title which should be only for the purpose of the connection, emotional attachment on the day of Ashura to get the bigger picture and to have that, you know, uh, the uh, holistic picture of the pain our Imam Sajjad had gone through. What we do is we take the title and we elaborate the title and just what we know about his name, we say he's Bimari Karbala. That is the case? No. That's not a right statement. And we are not serving justice towards our imam. Right? That's one point. So then now, what is, the, what is his legacy? What he did? If you ask for majority of the people, they know very little. Why? Because our structure is different and also there are lots of other uh, you know, component to it. Just would like to begin because I see that some of my younger ones also here. I want to kind of give them a bigger picture. Today, whatever we have, the knowledge of true Islam and Quran is a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very little we have, we have. Not everything. Just to kind of get the pic bigger picture, one of the companion, inshallah we can talk and discuss on the day of Arba'een about the first visitor of Imam Hussain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him and elevated him high and lofty position of Zair al Hussain, Jabir ibn Abdullah Ansari. He himself, he was a student for seven Imam Ma'asum, Noble Prophet of Islam, Fatima the Zahra, Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussain, Imam Sajjad, Muhammad Baqir, right? Seven Ma'asum. He was a student, companion for seven Ma'asum. That is not a you know, coincidence. No, he deserved to be that position. We can talk and discuss later on. That's not for today. Just I want to link that. Jabir, he has a hadith, says that I was able to get the knowledge from our fifth imam and he taught me 70,000 hadith. How many hadith? 70,000 hadith. And he says that I was not able to deliver that to others because of various reasons. And it was not a free uh, you know, platform for them. Like, Alhamdulillah, me and you, we, we sit here, we have a beautiful majalis, you know, we you know, prepare for that. You know, it was not the same like for the, our imams, the time of Jabir ibn Abdul Ansari. It was a very difficult, intense situation. It was embargo, it was a sanctions, uh, all sorts of uh, you know, limitations. With that, he was able to only convey to others only how many thousand? Thirteen. One, three thousand, thirteen thousand. Out of how many? Seventy thousand to thirteen thousand. So we have today, alhamdulillah, four main sources. We have two types of sources. One is secondary source. One is primary source. When it comes to the primary source, we have four, our primary source book. Usul Kafi, Tahdeeb, Istibsar, Man La Yahdurhul, Faqih. Four. If you go in those four books and research, how many hadith we have from Jabir, who is quoted from our fifth Imam? Although Jabir, we have a hadith, maybe a couple of hundred hadith from Jabir, but not all of them from our fifth Imam. He quoted from Noble Prophet, Fatima Tazara, and other. Aima, right? From our fifth Imam, we find maybe seven or eight hadith. If you go to other books, Wasal al Shia and so on and so forth, the Bihar, altogether, Jabir, he quoted only seven, like maybe 13 to 17 hadith. 17 hadith altogether. From him, Narrating from our fifth Imam. So the question is 70,000 he gave 
to the other people, 13,000. And today, me and you, if you want to research, want to connect, only we have how many hadith? 13 to 17. So less than 0.1%, right? Not even 1%. Not even 1%. So you do math. I don't want to go in detail about that. But the matter of the fact is, whatever we have, it's not that easy. So the point is, our fifth, our fourth imam, he lived up to the mission his father, he assigned for. And from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I want to know what is his legacy so I can follow that legacy, it's very difficult to find. That's why, inshallah, I would like to, uh, I will try in these majalis to connect that so we can plug in, so we can have a better knowledge about the mission of our fourth Imam. Please say the salawat. So Imam and Sajjad, the main component is after the event of Karbala, he was in prison, paraded, and the Masaib ends when he reached to Medina. And Medina is a peak for us. Why? Because in Medina, he was welcomed by thousands of people. In fact, right? Imam Sajjad, he asked Bashir to go and to inform people that we are here. So Imam Sajjad, what he did is he built a tent out of the Medina so people they can come and he can lay down the foundational path to success mission of Imam Hussain that was his main component not Masaib right Masaib is a very important tool to capture hearts of the people but he lived with the mission, not only emotional statement. So Imam, he asked for Bashir to go and bring the people. Bashir brought all the people and thousands of people of Medina chanting, beating themselves and crying. It was a very painful moment to see Sibut Rasulullah. It's not that easy. So people chanting, coming, and we know that Hazrat Umul Banin, she came, and also Abdullah bin Jafar, and also uh, you know, Muhammad Hanafiya, and so on and so forth, right? What happened after that? Do you ask yourself, what happened after that? In fact, When Imam Sajjad, he arrived in Medina, that was a beginning of what? Masaib. A new era of Masaib. For whom? Imam Sajjad. Subhanallah, same people. I would like to just share some of the points, brothers and sisters. Just imagine that. Same people, those who were there, Thousands upon thousands chanting, crying. After seven days, after how many days? Seven days. The governor of Kufa imposed a sanction against him that he is not welcomed in Masjid al-Nabi. In fact, he is not welcome in any of the masajid, Masjid al-Quba and any of the masajids. What was the reaction of the majority of the people at that time? But how many police and how many, for example, the soldiers governor had? 100, 200, 1,000? Not more than that, right? Why people of Medina did not resist it? Why? You ask yourself, till today, this is the main factor of the failure of humanity. Any society, a failing, is because one or two people, they want to control, or the force, 
And others, they don't have a courage to stand. Right? The majority, when they go silent and they don't resist, that will happen. They deserve that, right? So once they impose the sanctions, subhanallah, Bani Hashim, thousands, hundreds, right? Ansar, Muhajir, what happened to all of them? You wonder that when Imam Ali -Islam was assigned by Holy Prophet in Ghadir al Khum, 70,000 people they pledged the allegiance to Imam Ali. Bakhin, Bakhin, Lakaya Ali. Three days after the death of Holy Prophet, all three days, Janaza is laying there. And no one wants to buy that. Imam Ali, he has to do everything. And in third day, they announce that Khilafat has been established. And when people, they are dragging Imam Ali by force to where? To Masjid Nabi to get the ple no, pledge and allegiance from Imam Ali. Subhanallah. You wonder that why people, they did not resist it. All the people, they pledged the allegiance. Baba, this is the history. It will circulate time after time. You see, in the time of Hazrat Musa ala Nabina alayhi ala futahiyate wa thana, when Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, he left to Kuhe Tur to have an intimate time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to receive a greater message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He nominated whom? Harun. 30 days people were in peace, no problem, because he promised them that I am going to be away from you for 30 days. وَوَاعَدْنَا مُوسَى ثَلَاثِينَ لَيْلَةً And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala added 10 more days to test the people how they react. In those 10 days, people, they turn against Hazrat Musa. Third day, 31st day, begin to have some rumors, whisper, what happened? Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not happy with him. He wants to hold him. We don't, we told you so, and so on and so forth. The second day, third day, 33 day, Samari comes and brings a deception. And because of the deception of Samari, majority of the people, they followed him. Change. How could be? Yes. Same thing happened to whom? Imam Ali. And here, Imam is Sajjad. Same people, those who greeted him, Ya Allah. And they want to go to masjid to pray. And Imam is Sajjad, Zain al Abidi, Sayyidu Sajideen. He is out of the masjid with Musalla and doing Sajda. And people think, Ibn al-Kafir, Ibn al-Kafir, he's a son of Kafir, we need to clean up here. What happened to these same people? Subhanallah. How people they flip in very short time. So, Imam is sajjad he is facing that. For how many years? Seven years. Not one day, not one week, not one month, not one year. Seven years, he had no permission to go to Mecca, to go to Masjid al-Nabi, to offer just prayer. So what did he do to promote the mission of Imam Hussain? Did he give up? Oh, Ya Allah, I'm alone. They're not giving permission. I deserve to have a member. So I don't want to do anything. He sat in home. Think that's be subhanallah, 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 complaining to Allah. Oh Allah, I complain to you. No. What he did? Subhanallah. One of the powerful things he did, brothers and sisters, today I can elaborate one of the things and tomorrow day after tomorrow I'll try to you know, you know, cover some of the points so we can have a better understanding. The first thing what he did is he evaluated. He evaluated the situation. What is the need of the society and what is the best place he can begin with? Right? 
how to begin doing tabligh. Imam, he evaluated. Often we have a hadith and riwayat that he had some advice, although Imam no need any advice, but he did talk to some of the people. What we can do, right? Brothers and sisters, I would like to just mention from my teacher, Ayatollah Hassan Zadi Amali, who just passed away yesterday. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his soul and include him with the shahada of Karbala, inshallah. So he also, when he was one of the, you know, the, the uh, legend, pioneer, great, you know, you know the uh, visionary you know, scholar in all the you know, angles. So one of the advice, piece of advice he gave me is this, that if you want to spend your time, spend in these three areas, especially in the West, First, build the family stronger and emphasize and put all your effort to have a stronger families. If we have weak families, we cannot battle, right? It's impossible. First. Second, make sure that don't limit yourself, which we are doing Exactly opposite of that. Your massages, your activities, your budget should reflect for what? For the indigenous people. That's the roots. If you want to survive here, you need to bring the reverse, converts, ind indigenous people. Once they come here, they should take it. Subhanallah, in India, Pakistan, different places, when our great-grandfather, they saw the great opportunity of you know, business in India. Once they moved to India, what they did is India, Pakistan, all those subcontinents, they began to promote Islam. And because of their promotion of Islam, what happened is Islam was stronger, stronger, stronger. If they said, you know what, I want to have a small Imam Bargah, Hussain, yeah, Masjid, only for me and my family, that's it. Today, there was no Islam in India and Pakistan, believe me, right? What he said is, you, this is our duty to go and to make our roots strong with the support of indigenous people. How much we have masajid, our budget reflects, our activities reflects, or all the actions reflect for the converts and indigenous. Sometimes you wonder that if there is a convert comes here, after a week he's going to, or she's going to leave that. Why? Because we don't have a good system. I'm not talking about here. Alhamdulillah, you have a great system here. I'm talking about general in whole America. Right? That's second. The third one is spend all your focus and energy and resources for the building of education for the children. Because they will be the future leaders. They will carry, they will be a future ambassador of Islam. Because me and you, alhamdulillah, no problem. Even for example, if Dr. Asad and Minhaj and all, the, the, all of them, if you kick me out, tomorrow I'll come here because we can go. Right? But my children, your children, your grandchildren, if we don't spend, I would say that each masjid, each Imam Barga, if they have 90% of the budget goes for indigenous people to have a strong families, to have a strong system for our children, that community is prospering. You can see a good result, thriving. Otherwise, you will see that there is some problems or the time will going to melt and it's going to be a very painful future for us. So this is a side note. Please side a salawat. <laughs> Definitely next time you don't want to invite me, right? <laughs> Let me, because I don't have any problem. Let me share my pain. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that this can go to the online also. It's good that can be recorded. And on the judgment day, at least I can say, Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I did my responsibilities. Right? Please say the salawat. Imam al-Sajjad, what he did is, 
he collected the information and he saw that the most effective way is to tackle on the children. What age? From four to nine. Before four, they are too young. After eight, nine, they have to work in orchards. They have to help with the parents and they're a good source of income. So all the children after nine, they will be working with the parents. But this age, four to nine, as a prime age, it was a hassle and burden for the families. Those who have five, six, 10, 12 children in home, they're running around. They are, for example, nagging. They're difficult. There was no school system. There was no uh, nursery or preschool or any schooling system. There's no structure, nothing. And it was a hassle for the people of Medina, right? Then Imam Sajjad, he find the best opportunity to fulfill. Then what he did is, he started to build a schools. For whom? For the age of four to seven, four to eight, he used to knock the doors of the people. You have four, five year old, boy, son, daughter, send me, I'll take care of that. It was a blessing for them. Even kafir, that they, they attributed him as a kafir, but he can take care of these children because they are burdened for us. Take, take, take. Or his fourth imam, he used to collect all the children. 10, 20, 30. He built this school. Then he promoted other companion, other family member. And they had in different timings in Medina. Subhanallah, over these seven years, he had no privilege to enter the masjid. What he did is, he able to build the schools, a foundational system. Subhanallah. Brothers and sisters, you will you know, read in the history that when our fourth, a fifth imam, he began to preach, Close to 6,000 he had his students. Where these 6,000 came from? When I was sixth imam, he began to preach people. He had close to 18,000 students. Where this 18,000 came from? Those students, Imam Sajjad, he used to bring them. He used to teach them. He used to preach them. He used to nurture them. Shape their future. Mold their future. Make them strong. Subhanallah. Brothers and sisters, you will you know, sometimes we hear some of the sentence and we don't comprehend the complete picture and it's not going to make any sense to us. For example, why son of Muawiyah, Yazid, Yazid, son of Muawiyah, a fourth imam, he said, he was one of the great person, Rahimullah. May Allah be mercy upon him. What happened? Yazid, he lived when that corrupted environment, the Muawiyah, Muawiyah, the son of Yazid, his grandfather is Muawiyah, great, 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 great grandfather is uh, Abu Sufyan, right? His father is Yazid. But with all those corrupted environment, he decided that, you know what? This Khilafat, is not my right. After the death of Yazid, Muawiyah refused to take the position. Marwan, he killed him. He became shaheed. A fourth Imam says, May Allah be mercy upon him. Why? What happened? Because he had his teacher, one of the students of a fourth Imam, he influenced him, he taught him, and because of that connection, he refused to take this position. It's not that easy, right? It's a very deep plan. Our Imam, by sitting in Medina, he's planting the seed to cultivate a best result. Brothers and sisters, if we don't plant the seed of 
education today, if we don't do anything, we cannot cultivate a best result. We cannot aim for the best result. It's up to us, me, you. If we don't do that, no one will do for us. That is very important for us to understand, comprehend, dissect, take it, precise. Think, have uh, meetings upon meetings. Our fourth imam, being imam, he is teaching to four, five, six, seven year old children. If, for example, today, if you invite me, one can come and, for example, take care of the four year, five year old children, I will be offended, right? Why? Because our mindset is messed up. We think that if I have a powerful majlis, people say, wow, wow, all of that, that is a service to Imam Hussain. No, that is not only service, that's a great service. By the way, you want to get a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, majalis is taharatu qulubil mu'mineen, is a great you know, source of inspiration, source of iman, all of that. No doubt about that. This majlis, this member, this masajid, the fazail is a key to success. No doubt about that. But limiting to that is something we have to think, right? So why? Because our mindset is, if I have a powerful majlis, that is a majlis. How many of us we thought that we need to have example parallel to that, let's say, have a great majlis for the children? for their appropriate age, for them, develop something. These are the things. I urge sisters, brothers, I know that in your community, in every community, especially here, you have a great people, those who have a great background of education. You can arrange something. Alhamdulillah, we build some, I'm going to bring some uh, tomorrow, if it's possible, inshallah, some, for example, projects. For the children, our buying project, this project, we need to do something. We need to engage them. Once they come here, they should feel that this is my home. It's not burden. They have to have the best connection. The connection can be established when you give the importance. They have to feel that this is my home. I have every single uh, you know, elements to grow and thrive. That's how. So anyhow, our fourth imam, what he did is he built the schools. This is school, today we call it madrasa or education system, whatever you can call it. And when it comes to a 56th imam, the university. Why? Because the same students, they graduated and they able to become the student of our sixth imam to be a great source of knowledge to others. Brothers and sisters, ask yourself. On the judgment day, it's a hadith, Sayati Zamanun. We're going to stand sometimes this hadith and rewards will kind of you know awaken us, shock us, right? On the judgment day we'll stand, a line of people standing. Ilahana Rabbana, O Allah, He is the cause of my Going astray from the iman, the lalats. Say, Rabbana, I don't recognize him. Who is this person? He's your great grandfather, children. Why? Because you messed up with your son, your daughter, and then they messed up in their second generation, third generation, till the judgment day. If something goes wrong today, as I mentioned yesterday about Ubaidullah bin Abbas having all the elements to become the best of the best, he chose to be worst of the worst. Not only him, his whole lineage gone astray. So Ubaidullah should be responsible partially, if not all, for all his Bani Abbas dynasty, their corruption, their tyranny, their zulm, right? He should, he should be held responsible for that. Alhamdulillah, me, you, we are here because of my own choice, because I choose to be here, not someone else. But our children, they did not choose to be here with their own will. We brought that, right? So we will be responsible directly for their future. Alhamdulillah, you have a great plans. I don't want to just, uh, you know, this is a pain I have to share everywhere I go and we can just let, let me 
uh, continue this, uh, this, this with uh, one very uh, you know, turning point incident happened to me myself. So I can share with you. So inshallah, I'm sorry, I know this Arbain Majalis, but these types of informations can help us navigate to uh, uh, you know, some uh, good uh, conclusion. So personally, I have a very eye-opening experience. Like, for example, here, when people, they, like a couple of years, I'm not going that much. This is perhaps in the last two years, the first visit. And even before, I just I go one or two places because I'm uh, you know, uh, kind of occupied with uh, other things. I don't want to go in detail. But before, I used to go travel a lot, right? So one of the cities, I don't want to mention the name of the city, after the majlis, uh, no, before the majlis, one of the person, he came, said, Morna, Asham ko please come to our home for, you know, for Dawat. When you hear Dawat, what do you think? Mashallah, right? Should be good, lavish food. And uh, the Morana deserve to have that, right? That's the only usage of the Morana, when someone invite Morana to have a good you know, meal. And sometimes I shame myself, I'm sorry, month of Muharram Ramadan, even after Majlis, so only a table for Morana. Why? I don't, know, I don't understand that philosophy. And uh, please, if you can, you know, tear down that or, you know, uh, so it's like any tabarruk Morana should deserve, right? I don't want to go in detail about that. Inshallah, this is my message. Please don't do anything from at least tonight and after that. For me, for others, mashallah, you can do that, right? So that's the philosophy, you know, mindset of the people. And I thought that I'm going to have some good food, right? So, okay, no problem. After Majlis, I saw that the tabarruk and the gentleman was eating, mashallah, good, you know, big meal. I began to question myself, that he's joking or what? I said, no, maybe he wants to have a tabarruk, but he wants to arrange, he arranged something in his own. I can have that. I just ate like one or two bites and that's it. While I was going with him, his wife and his daughter, they left with one car, and me and him, we, you know, he was riding me. So on the way, he said, Morana, I'm sorry, we don't have any food. So shock, I mean, if you don't have any food, then why are you inviting me for dawah? Dawah is something food. So okay, then automatically my mind goes to second reason. If the first reason, Morana, you're not inviting for food, is there is some problem between you and husband, your wife, right? Couple problem. Said, you okay with your wife? Oh, Alhamdulillah, me and my wife, we are lovely family, lovely couple, no problem, we are on the same page. Alhamdulillah. Then, what is my usage of being in home? I mean, if I'm not eating anything, or I'm, I'm not going to be useful for between you and your wife, what, 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 what is the... So, no, we have a problem with our daughter. Oh, first time someone thinks that I can do something for your children, right? It's okay, Alhamdulillah. So what is the problem? I said, Maulana, I cannot express. I begin to question myself that I take her to Umrah, Karbala, I don't know, every year I go back, back to my home so she can be in our, uh, you know, she's like uh, uh, 10, 11, 11 year old. And we did everything, she's Balegha, we tried and also I am, dedicated in uh, you know, Sunday school and everything, like all of you are doing, mashallah, it's a big contribution. So he's also uh, you know, engineer, his wife is a physician, all of that, right? We do everything for Imam Hussain. But see what Imam Hussain is giving us. What? My daughter, instead of having Zaina, Sukaina, Ruqayya as her inspirational uh, lead and guide and also uh, role models, she is talking about, you know, other models. Said, well, uh, I don't know, I'm not a magic stick. Uh, disclaimer, I, I, I may not be helpful, and you're going to blame me also because you're blaming other ulama. So you're going to blame me also, just with this disclaimer. If you think that I'm a magic stick, please don't take you home, just leave, you know, take me to a hotel. Uh, otherwise, just I can talk to her. Said, oh, please come, at least we we'll try. So okay, when I went there, like a typical, for example, uh, environment, very tense environment, and mom said, Marana will come and discipline you. He will talk to you about 
For example, the role model is Zainab, Ruqayya, Sukaina, not other people. You understand? She's like shivering, sitting, say, Allah, hawla, wala, qadra, what a poor lady, poor girl. I mean, <laughs> why we have to punish her? Astaghfirullah, I said, you know what? If you can allow me, I want to talk to her for a few minutes. It's okay. I began to talk to her. I said, uh, look, I have five boys. And I say, mashallah, my boys are hype, you know, very active, mashallah. We have some wrestling in our home sometimes. It's good, alhamdulillah. I have five boys. I have no idea about girls, how they decorate the room and so on and so forth. Can I see your room? Just I want to kind of deviate her from her stress. She said, yeah, no problem. Happily, she was, you know, uh, guiding me towards her room. We went second floor. The moment I entered her room is Seven Star Hotel. Everything prim, proper, clean, mashallah. I never imagined in my life that I can see these types of things. I said, did your mom, she does that? So no, I will do. I said, wow, you're a genius, great, mashallah. It was eye-opening for me to see that, alhamdulillah. So then I began to see all the our room, the, I don't want to mention the name, like Lady Gaga, whatever, singing everywhere, pictures. Oh, oh, mashallah. So she's your role model. So proudly I would say, yes. God, alhamdulillah. So uh, tell me, why not Sukaina? She said, I don't want to be you know, the uh, uh, crybaby for the rest of my life. So what? She was captured, she was punished, and she was killed. What she has to offer to me? Right. She has anything to offer me? No. So what she has? Oh, she gave me one book. Her contributions for the poor and needy people in Africa. She goes there, cut the ribbon, and arrange for well, water, education, this and that. So I want to be like her, to serve the mankind. Wow. I said, you're absolutely right. You should be my role model. You're great. You should blame me not to introduce our model, great role model, properly. We fail to introduce our best pure model and enemies, they penetrate it in our children's hearts and souls and mind and they succeeded, right? I said, okay, no problem, you're right. You should be, you know, blame me, not others. So she was kind of puzzled, what? I said, let's go down. And then I said to the parents, uh, very nervous, what he's doing, this, uh, you know, mullah, you know, the marana words, you know, this, uh, what he's doing in, his, in her room, right? I, I came down, I said, you know what? You, me, should be blamed for, you know, uh, her not having the connection to our guide, not herself. So what? I said, let's talk and discuss. And then I explained to her, every celebrities and those who are wealthy people, they have their own 501c3, non-profit for two purposes. One is tax. Second one is to have a peace of mind. You know that. Even Fir'aun, when he used to kill and appraise people, he couldn't sleep night time, right? He has to bring the beggars and other people. He used to feed them to have peace of mind to sleep. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with a pure fitra, right? And they have to please that. So once she cut the ribbon, they, you know, they, they, they feel that, wow, I'm doing something for the orphanary people, right? These are the two main reasons. I said, no, that's, we understand. You don't understand about the, the tax and all of that. But let me introduce you about Hazrat Sukaina sallallahu alayhi There's a book from Sheikh Abduh. Sheikh Abduh 
is a vice chancellor of the, uh, the uh, Al Hazarian Street Sunni. He wrote a book called Fada'il Banat al Hussain. The virtues are the, the great service of the daughters of Imam Hussain. And one of the chapter is Hazrat Sukaina or Ruqayya and her contribution to the mankind. Right? So all what, what we hear is what? The slap, tamache, this burning out of the, that's a, the, the, the great source of inspiration, right? But that's not her only contribution. The contribution is how she changed the Damascus. Damascus. Do you thought that what happened to the people of Damascus, the same people of Damascus, those who are cursing Imam Ali and Ahlul Bayt, the same people, they were governed by the Bani Umayyah, same people, they became extreme Nusairi, lovers of Ahlul Bayt. What happened to the people? Do you thought about that? Hazrat Sukaina, when she was in prison, subhanallah, the prison was, you know, people, they describe different things, but one of the things is, it was where open space with some, you know, chain around that. Nighttime, because of the cold, they will be punished, and daytime, because of the heat, right? And when people, the children of Damascus, they used to throw the, you know, rocks and pebbles and disrespect them and torture them. Hazrat Zayed, Hazrat Ruqayya, Hazrat Sukaina, she used to collect the food. And she used to give the food to the children. When children, they saw that it's a different thing. And then she began to preach them, teach them knowledge, Quran. So, Sheikh Abdo says that Hazrat Ruqayya, she's the first teacher for the children of where? Damascus, subhanallah. That's one of her contribution to the mankind, to change the mindset of the people, to you know, give the roots of Islam in the hearts and minds of the children. And he quoted lots of things around to you know, take the... So the point is, when I told her she was changed, she began to shed the tears, so no one told me. I said, yes, we don't have any books, we don't have anything. Alhamdulillah, later on, his, both his parents, they came, mashallah. It was because of her, whatever we have, Al-Kisa Foundation, I would give her credit that she is the one who changed my mind to have Al-Kisa Foundation, Kisa Kids, and all of that things. So anyhow, brothers and sisters, the point here is, Imam Isa, his legacy is what? to change the educational system, to bring the roots, a foundation, especially for our children here in this environment. Brothers and sisters, just I would like to you know, mention this point since we are talking about Hazrat Imam Sajjad, Allahu Akbar. Aapne kabhi socha hai ke Abu Hamza Somali kaun hai? Jaante kaun Abu Hamza Somali? Count Abu Hamza Somali, Butcher, Qasai, Qasai ya Butcher jo hamari us zamane mein bhi ye tha ki uski zaban badi hi gandi hoti thi, kharaab hoti thi. Thik hai? Har do minute mein 40 galiyan hoti thi. Wo to aise zamana. Thik hai? Main Qasaiyon ko bhi ye nahi karao main Khuda khasta. Us zamane matlab bata raha tha. To unka jo lakab tha, wo ye tha ki وہ بدہن لسان الخبیث کہا کرتے تھے ان کو لیکن وہی ابو حمزہ ثمالی کا لقب کیا ہے افصح العرب کیسے ہوا کیا ہوا وہ قصائی امام سجاد کھڑے میں بکرا زبا کر رہا ہے مولا کیا آنکھوں سے آنسو بولا کیا آنکھوں سے آنسوں قصائی ابو حمزہ سمالی کہتے کہ جوان کیوں کھڑا ہے ہو سکتا ہے پیسہ نہ ہو گھر میں فقیری تھی اس زمانے میں گوش کی کمی ہے گوش لے لے کہ نہیں اس کے لیے میں سوال کرتا ہوں کیا تم زبا کرنے سے پہلے پانی بھی دیا 
کہ یہ کیسے ہو سکتا ہے یہ مدینہ ہے شہر رسول ہے رسول اللہ کی ٹیچنگس ہے بغیر پانی کی زبان نہیں کرتے امام سجاد ٹرن کرتے ہیں کہا کر بلا سلام علیہ کیا ابا عبد اللہ سلام علیہ کیا ابا عبد اللہ پورے مصائب مصائب پڑھ رہے ہیں ابو حمزہ سمالی کی آنکھوں سے سیلاب جاری ہے بولے یہ کیا آپ کریں یہ کیا قصہ ہے پوری کربلا کی داستان اب یہ ٹرننگ پوائنٹ ہے ابو حمزہ سمالی اب وہی ابو حمزہ سمالی افسول عرب بنا امام کی خدمت میں ہے اب دعا آئے مکارم الاخلاق ابو حمزہ سمالی کون نقل کر رہے ہیں وہی ابو حمزہ سمالی اب دیکھیے مقام کہاں سے کہاں تک اب یہ دعا کل انشاء اللہ عرض کروں گا کہ دعا جو ذخیرہ ہے کہاں کا ذخیرہ ہے یہ امام حسین کی عملی پیغام کا ایک ذخیرہ ہے ابو حمزہ سمالی اس کے ایک چھوٹی سی مثال ہے اللہ اکبر اپنے آپ کو کہتے ہیں سوال کریں کہ میں امام کا پیرو امام کا چاہنے والا امام کے نام پہ آنکھوں سے آنسو بہانے والا الحمدللہ ہم سب یہاں بیٹھے ہوئے ہیں دیکھیں میں کتنا اس اہداف میں اتر سکتا ہوں میں امام سے کتنا قریب ہوں اور امام کے پیغام کو کتنا میں لے کر آنے والی نسلوں کو لے جاؤں سوال کریں گے اپنے لیے جب سوال نہیں کریں گے نا تو مشکل ہے آئے اپنے دلوں کو لے جائے وہی امام سید سجاد سید لابتی شیخ عباس تمہیں نقل فرماتے ہیں ہمارے پاس جو مسائب ملے ہیں نا کچھ مسائب ملے ہیں کس سے دشمنوں سے حمید بن مسلم رائٹ وہ جو دشمنوں کے ساتھ تھے انہیں لشکر یزیدی میں تھے جو مسائب دیکھ رہے تھے وہ نقل کی کچھ مسائب ملتے ہیں کہاں جو مختار ثقیفی کے قیام جب ان کو پکڑا گیا بھائی تم بتاؤ کیا ہوا سب بتا رہے تھے کچھ مسائب ملے ہیں حضرت فضا سے کچھ مسائب ملے زینب کبرا سے کچھ مسائب ملے امام سجا سے چلے امام نقل فرماتے ہیں کہ کچھ مقامات پر جبرائیل امین گریا کی اللہ امام سجاد کی امامت کا آغاز ہے کہ کس حالت میں ہوا ہے غش کی حالت میں بے حکم خدا بیماری ہے زینب کبرا سراب تلے زینب میں دیکھ نہیں سکی صبر نہیں کر سکی جانا چاہتی ہے امام انگلیوں کی اشارے سے فرماتے ہیں یا اختی زینب ارجئی جاؤ اندر چلی جاؤ اب زینب سے رہا نہیں گا وہ شمر جول سنا لا صدر ایک طرف شمر سینے حسین پر سوار ہے کن خنجر لیے زینب کبرا صبر نہیں کر سکی ادھر بھاگ رہی ادھر بھاگ رہی آخر میں یہ کی چاہ رہا تھا کہ امام سجاد کے خیمے کے اندر پہنچی کہا بیٹا بیٹا دیکھو کیا ہو رہا ہے اب جیسے امام سجاد غش سے افاقا ہوتے ہیں فرماتے ہیں کہ پپی زینب خیمے کے پردے کو ہٹائے جیسے پردہ ہٹا کیا دیکھا بالا نیزا سر حسین السلام علیک یا ابا عبداللہ یہ حالت اس وقت امام سجاد کی امامت کا آغاز ہوتا ہے اب امام سجاد کھڑے ہوئے اللہ اس سے پہلے روایت حدیث میں بتاتا ہے کہ یہاں تک کہ ناول نل اسا مجھے اسا دیجیے تاکہ اسا کے ذریعے کھڑا ہوں لیکن امام سجاد اس حالت کو دیکھ کے کھڑے ہو جاتے ہیں سلام کرتے ہیں نہ جانے امام سجاد کے امتحان کی کیا منزل تھی کہ شہیدوں کی شہداء کے شہید ہونے کی جو منزل ہے وہ ابتدائے منزل امام سجاد ہے تو اس حالت تو دیکھیں حضرت جبرائیل گریا کرتے پہلا مقام ہے دوسرا مقام کون سا ہے دوسرا مقام اب بارہ سن چکے ہیں مصیبتوں کا جیسے ذکر ہوتا ہے جیسے ہی گریا و بکا و مصیبت کا ذکر ہوتا ہے تو امام سجاد سے جب سوال کیا گیا کہ آقا مولا بتائیے کہ پورے اس سفر میں مدینہ سے مدینہ تک سب سے زیادہ عذیت کہاں پہنچی ہے تو امام نے کیا کہا اشار اشام اشام اب یہ بتائیے اشام 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 ہے کیا 
دل پھٹ جاتا ہے نہ جانے کتنے مسائب کی دریائے اس میں بہا جائیں کتنی کتابیں لکھی کافی ہے لیکن یہ ایک مسائب کا فکرہ یہ ہے کہ امام سجاد فرماتے ہیں اب جیسے کاروان کو روکا گیا دربار سجا ہے اب جیسے دربار سجا لیا گیا کئی دن کے بعد نہ جانے کتنے دن گزر گئے اب جیسے اجازت دی جاتی ہے تو امام سجاد اللہ ان کی سالت میں ہے سنجی پہ جکڑے میں بردہ فروشان کے مارکٹ میں لے جا رہے ہیں تو ہی نہیں ہو رہی ہیں اب بالائے بام گھروں کے اوپر عورتیں گرم پانی کھاؤتا با پانی لے کر بیٹھی بھی ہیں پتروں کے ذریعے نجانی بچوں پہ جو مسئیبتیں ٹوٹ پڑی امام سجاد دیکھ رہے ہیں کبھی سرے امام حسین کو کبھی اپنی بھوپی بہنوں کو اللہ اکبر کیا حالت امام سجاد کی اب جیسے یہ حالت انسان دیکھ نہیں سکتا اللہ اکبر اس حالت میں کہا جائے امام سجاد فرماتے ہیں کہ ہمیں معمولی جگہ سے نہیں گزارا گیا بلکہ کہاں سے گزارا گیا یہودی گلی سے گزارا گیا اعلان کیا گیا اے یہودیوں اگر بدلہ لینا ہے خیبر و خندر کا یہی ہے تمہارے آپ و اجداد کو قتل کرنے والے اب یہودی بددن آ کے کھڑے ہو گئے جو استقبال ہو رہا ہے جو اعلان کیا جا رہا ہے اسی درمیان کوئی یہودی نے کہا کہ اس بچی کو میں قدیزے میں لینا چاہتا ہوں آپ اندازہ کریں جب ننی سکینہ ترپ رہی ہے یہ یہودی کے ہاتھ میں شاید بیج دیا جائے اب زینہ میں کبرا کی کیا حالت بھی ہوگی امام سجاد اپنے آپ کو گھوڑے سے گرا دیتے ہیں حضرت سکینہ کو سیجھتے ہیں فرماتے ہیں الہی رضا بے قضائے ماتم حسین